this is so annoying. It does say live here, but this little other thing doesn't say live. And that's why I'm afraid <laughs> to start. I wish some, somebody was watching and telling me you're live. I mean, I'm sure, oh, there we go. Preparing the live stream. Okay. Uh -huh, nice. That's why, you, that's why you can't be doing anything weird on Zoom before, like, you know, because it's all gets captured. So here we go. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest, I am meeting for the first time, and I can already tell you're going to love her. She's just delightful. She looks like she's in high school or college. She looks so great. It just shows you what the plant-based diet can do. And you may have heard from her from her very, very popular blog, or maybe have one of her books. I actually saw her on a, it was a summit. That's where I first was introduced to her. Her name is Sam Turnbull, and she's going to be making oatmeal breakfast cookies please welcome her to the show thanks so much for being here thank you for having me this is so much fun already and it's just begun <laughs> yeah, no, I you, you just seem like such a wonderful bright happy person I love that I could tell right away and I love your shirt by the way yes thank you I wore it especially for you because I know you're a fan of kale <laughs> this is uh, my valentine's day present from my fiance so classy vegan fashion <laughs> that is so cool it's like it's like it's like the calvin klein thing do, do you know where he got it because people would love that shirt yeah i'm not sure actually i forget the name but i could definitely post it on my instagram after this so people can uh can go and find it but i posted it before there for sure <laughs> absolutely well congratulations on getting engaged or get, getting married today the, the plant-based world was taken by storm because brian wendell the executive producer of forks over knives is finally engaged to chef darshana thacker so we've got a lot of good matches oh amazing i didn't know that yeah. so i'm hearing well, the news from you <laughs> <laughs> when are you getting married uh, we're getting married in June. So yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. We were planning on doing a, like the whole big shabil, the whole like big <laughs> wedding. Uh, but of course, during because of the times, we're just doing a kind of little micro wedding. So it'll be really special and really quaint and really lovely, hopefully. <laughs> That's right. Will it be a plant-based wedding? Of course, 100% vegan. Both me and my fiance are vegan. And so vegan all the way. We're actually That's getting a seven course catered vegan meal. So it's going to be really, really lovely. That's incredible that, that I mean, because I got married like 26 years ago and we could not find a vegan caterer. We could find a vegetarian one though. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, really looking forward to it. Yeah, because we thought if we can't do, you know, the whole big thing we wanted to do, let's make it as special as we can. So by having food, which is my favorite thing, <laughs> we're just going to focus on making the food the most delicious part, <laughs> the most fun so, part. In case some reviewers are unfamiliar with you, your blog or your books, tell us a little bit about how you got started in the plant-based world. Sure. So um, in 2012, like I was not a vegan at all my whole life. I grew up on a farm. It wasn't an animal farm specifically, but we did have uh, chickens that we raised for meat and eggs. Um, and I grew up in a family of actually of uh, chefs and uh, butchers and hunters. So definitely not vegan at all. <laughs> Um, and my house literally had animal heads on the walls that I grew up in. Um, so it was, it was definitely, I came from a non-vegan place for sure. And I wasn't someone who was even like toying with the idea of vegetarianism. Uh, I like meat and I like cheese and I loved all of those things. And uh, you're squinting. Are you seeing everything okay? I can't, no, I'm not, I'm not, oh yeah, don't, I don't, don't tell my secrets. I, I, I really should wear the glasses. I'm monitoring the chat. So people are actually typing things live. So, but yeah. Okay, okay, uh, okay. You, you busted me, but thank you. <laughs> that's, that's, why I've got, that's why I've got these wrinkles from squinting. I should just be a grown up and just wear the glasses, you know? <laughs> I love a good pair of glasses. Yep. Uh, yeah, but anyway, so yeah. So yeah, definitely grew up with someone who never thought they'd be a million, uh, vegan in a million and six years. Um, and then one day in December of 2012, um, I was having a day where I was just kind of feeling not so healthy, just a little on the thicker side and just kind of wanted to kind of be feel, feel a little healthier and cleanse a little bit. And so to inspire me, I watched a, a documentary called Veducated, which I'm sure you probably know. I just um, met and a few days ago, Marissa. Yes. Oh, did you? Oh yeah. She's great. <laughs> I love her. Um, but yes, I watched that because I thought it was a documentary about vegetables, um, but it turned out it was a documentary about vegans. Uh, and so I watched that and it just completely changed my mindset on everything. And I went vegan overnight. And uh, it was a pretty big change because I had grown up loving meat and cheese. And the next morning I woke up and cleaned out my kitchen of all of the animal products I had. And I started from scratch. And honestly, at the time, I didn't know if I thought it was going to stick because it seemed like a really big challenge and it was hard and I didn't know anyone who was vegan um, personally and so 
it was hard, but I kept watching all the documentaries and reading all the books. And so I knew that for my own, uh, to live my life according to my own values, I had to be vegan. Um, so I decided to figure out how to do it. <laughs> And so what I started to do was go online and look up recipes and I bought some cookbooks and I tried to make the recipes. Um, and uh, at that time, uh, most of the vegan food was really focused around uh, really, really health focused foods. So, um, you know, smoothies and balls and energy balls and all this stuff. And that stuff was fine. But what I found is that I was missing some of my favorite recipes. And so I started veganizing my own recipes that I, I grew up with, grew up loving. And I started writing those down and I wanted to share them with uh, my friends and family. So I started posting them online so that they, I could be like, look, see, vegan food is good. <laughs> um, but, uh, but what happened is that people from all over the world started making my recipes and enjoying them and leaving comments. And I always say, I'm, I'm like a dog. If you pat me on the head and tell me I'm good, I'll love you forever. So these comments just made me so happy. And so I just like fell in love with recipe writing. And uh, that's how I began. So I started my blog about eight years ago. And uh, I've been being a vegan recipe writer ever since. <laughs> so where did you get the name for your blog? Oh, well, I was trying to be a little bit cheeky, <laughs> a little bit funny, uh, because a lot of the blogs I saw were either very, very health focused, which is fine, um, or were kind of very focused on the animal cruelty. But I really wanted to play on the idea that you didn't always have to be such a like severe, serious vegan, that you could still be fun, you could still laugh. And so uh, I named my blog, It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken, uh, which is a little bit of a joke, because uh, if you know that expression, people say things taste like chicken when it's just kind of bland um, and it just kind of tastes like nothing uh, and of course so I wanted to play on that for two reasons one it doesn't taste like chicken because it's not chicken and two it's not bland and boring it's wonderful and delicious and vegan and full of spices <laughs> hey does Marissa know you're the reason I mean, she's her documentary was the reason you went vegan uh, I believe so I've mentioned it many times <laughs> that is so cool so tell yeah. us about, that is fantastic tell us about your books so my first cookbook is called Fuss Free Vegan, and it has become a bestseller, and I believe it's in its 10th print now, which is crazy, and it has something like 1,500 Amazon five-star reviews, which is crazy. <laughs> um, and so that's the book I wrote when, um, uh, the book that I wish that I had when I went vegan. So I wrote all of my favorite recipes, everything from breakfast, lunches, and dinners, uh, cakes, cookies, and pies, burritos, pasta, you know, all of the good stuff that I was craving missing. I put all of that in the book so that at least if no one liked it, I had a book of everything I liked, but it turns out a lot of people really liked it as well. Do you have it to show us? Um, I do actually, my computer is on, on top of it. So let me move my stack of books. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a very useful book. You can use it. To... It is. <laughs> so this is it. That's me. <laughs> you just like it. That's cool. Fuss-free vegan. I love it. Yeah. So it's all about making uh, vegan food a little bit more approachable. It uses ingredients that you can find at your local grocery store. So you don't have to go to a health food store to buy these ingredients. And it doesn't also doesn't use any ingredients that are, you know, pre-made processed uh, vegan food. So like, you know, vegan meats and cheeses and stuff, everything you make from scratch, but it's all really easy and really delicious because vegan food doesn't have to be complicated. No, and it doesn't have to be expensive. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah. And so you have a new book, though, or a newer book. I do. And you'll find that this hits the nail on the head of what we're just talking about. So this is my brand new book, Fast, Easy, Cheap, Vegan. <laughs> and so the concept with this book is that I really wanted to bust the myth that vegan food has to be complicated. It has to be time consuming. It has to be expensive. So uh, there are 101 recipes in this book. And uh, every single recipe takes 30 minutes or less to prepare it costs $10 or less for the entire dish. So that's not just for one serving, it's for the entire dish. And uh, it uses only 10 ingredients or less. So I just made sure to make recipes that are jam packed full of flavor. They're super hearty, they're super satisfying, uh, but they're all super easy and affordable to make so that no one can have that excuse anymore that, oh, vegan food is too hard, it's too complicated, it's too expensive, no more. <laughs> that is fantastic. And that's, what, that's the book you're gonna be making a recipe from today. That's right. Yeah, I have the, uh, the, my, my oatmeal breakfast cookies, which I think you'll like because they're definitely on the healthier side. So they look like that. Delicious. Yeah. 
and these are great because this is kind of like a cross between a cookie and a granola bar. They're really easy to whip up and you can kind of make them your own a little bit as well, but they're healthier because you make them with banana and without any oil or any added sugar. So it's a really nice, healthy snack, but it feels like you're kind of being, you know, a little bit of a cheat because you get to have a cookie for breakfast. Gosh, I'd love to see it. You know, it's so interesting that you literally went vegan overnight. A lot of people have more of a transition. You know, they go from whatever they were eating or standard American diet to vegetarian to, to junk food. You, you just did it overnight. That's incredible. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm that kind of person. I'm like an all or nothing kind of person. So <laughs> I had to attack it head on. And uh, I was like, okay, if I'm going to try this, I can't just like sort of work my way in. That wouldn't work for me. I had to figure it all out because I didn't want to just slowly reduce things because I knew I wouldn't stick to that and also just watching those documentaries it just it broke my heart seeing some of the stuff and I really just didn't want to be involved in that in any way or, or put that in my mouth anymore <laughs> so it's pretty easy for me to make the transition mentally it was just physically it, it was a little bit of work were you able to influence any friends or family members to go vegan yeah, well, um, definitely uh, some people in my family, uh, my people in my family aren't vegan necessarily. Some of them went vegan for a few years, which I don't know if that counts, if they're technically vegan or not. But um, but a lot of people eat way more plant-based. Like I said, I grew up in a really uh, meat-heavy, like milk-heavy, dairy-heavy family. And so I know my, my parents, for example, uh, they eat so little animal products now. It's really great. And I think that's fantastic. I'm, I don't expect everyone to be as hardcore as I am, but every little bit helps and every little bit makes you healthier and it's better for the planet and the animals. So I think that's really great. That's fantastic. So um, yeah. do we have to preheat our ovens for this? I'm yes, we do. So you'll want to preheat your oven to 350 Fahrenheit. Um, and then you can line your pan. <laughs> you can line your pan with a bit of uh, parchment paper um, to make it nonstick. Or you can use oil if you use oil. But I know you don't use oil, so we're not going to use any oil. <laughs> Thank you. But that's nice of you to be able to, you know, modify it for people like us. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, a lot of these recipes, I'm not oil free myself, but a lot of these recipes can very easily be made oil free as long as you know how to do a water or broth latte. So it's as simple as that for, for the vast majority of the recipes. So um, and I do that a lot myself as well at home because I like to be healthier sometimes, too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And so what you're going to want to do is grab yourself a large bowl. And I'm going to kind of be teaching you like this because it's going to be an awkward camera angle thing. <laughs> And uh, to your bowl, you're going to add a three quarter cup of mashed banana. Um, so the nice thing about banana is that it will kind of replace the oil and the sugar in this recipe. Um, and to make sure your cookies are nice and sweet, you want to use a really a brown banana. The, the more brown, the more sweet it'll be and the more tasty these cookies will be. <laughs> yeah, so we'll add our three quarter cups of mashed banana. I already did that ahead of time. Um, but you just take a fork and mash it up. And then we have half a cup of peanut butter. I'm using a natural peanut butter, which I always prefer to cook with because uh, it doesn't have any extra junk in there. The only ingredient is peanuts. Um, if you can't use peanuts though, um, you could definitely use any kind of nut or seed butter that you like. Uh, so, you know, a cashew butter, an almond butter, a sunflower seed butter, they will all work beautifully. So half a cup of that. Have you ever heard of the nut for milk machine? Because I just make my own nut butters in like two minutes. It's so cool. Yeah, I don't know that machine, no, but I've definitely made my own nut butters with like a food processor. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, it's so it's so yeah. it's so easy. It's just cheaper. So that easy. Part. It is, and, and usually it tastes a little bit fresher as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so now I'm just gonna add a quarter cup of warm water. And you want to make sure it's warm so that it'll help activate the chia seeds, which we'll be putting in soon. <laughs> and I have a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Now, if you want to use a whole wheat flour, you definitely can. Or if you want to use a gluten-free flour, that should work well, too. So any kind of flour you want to use should pretty much work really well in this recipe, as long as it's a little bit absorbs. Absorb 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 <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> as long as it absorbs. <laughs> quarter cup of that. Um, okay, now we have a quarter cup of brown sugar, a little bit of sweetness. And if you want to use a coconut sugar, I know that uh, that's a really good alternative for brown sugar. Uh, and I have two tablespoons of chia or flax seeds. I'm using chia today, um, but both work really great. 
And then lastly, or not lastly, but my spices. So this is one teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And if you want to play around with this recipe a little bit, you could use a pumpkin pie spice and that would be really nice as well. So I'm just going to give this all a mix until it kind of comes together to a nice liquidy consistency. Well, it's going to be like a thick, spicy, liquidy consistency, but I just want it all nice and mixed. Do you like it so? Hmm? Oh, I was just wondering if is there's any equipment you love to use to make your food prep easier, like the Instant Pot, for example. Do you ever use that? Um, I have an Instant Pot. I really only use it to make um, beans from scratch because everything else I find kind of comes out mushy and uh, it sometimes it takes longer for me because a lot of my recipes are designed to be so quick. Uh, you know, I have recipes in this book that are 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and the Instant Pot takes so long to heat up and so long to like depressurize that uh, half the time the recipes are quicker if you don't use an Instant Pot. So I don't ever find it to be the most instant of the instant. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should call it the almost Instant Pot. The almost Instant Pot, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, and so now we have two and a half cups of uh, oatmeal, and this is a quick oatmeal. And so if you have large flake oatmeal, one really cool hack is that all you have to do is chuck it in your food processor and just pulse it a few times, and then you have yourself quick oatmeal. Uh, so it's the same thing. It's just fine, more finely ground. We'll add that. And then lastly, <laughs> funny angles. <laughs> Um, you can add a half a cup of your favorite add-in. So you can use any combination of fruit or nuts, like dried fruit or nuts or seeds. So today I'm using uh, raisins, uh, vegan chocolate chips, and some chopped walnuts. But you could use anything you like, any kind of nuts like almonds or cashews or pecans would be delicious. Um, and yeah, if you want to use like dried cranberries or candy ginger, anything like that would be delicious. So you can really play around with this recipe and make it your own, which is really nice. Nice. Yeah, so now we're making this, it's gonna become a really stiff dough, which is just what we want. So you might even have to get in there with your hand eventually, but I'm gonna to try to use my spoon here not to get too messy in the kitchen today. <laughs> Did you like to cook and create recipes before you were vegan? Uh, yes, I've always loved to cook. I've always loved to create. I didn't necessarily write so many recipes, um, because I just felt like there were so many recipes out there, but it was when I really went vegan and found that there was a lot of recipes that weren't there for me to have that I needed to make my own. But I've cooked ever since I could reach the counter or probably before I'd stand on a stool and cook. My mom always taught me to cook. So that was really lovely. Um, so here is my batter. So it's a nice thick oatmeal batter. And what you're going to want to do with this is take a quarter, about a quarter cup of it. It's going to be very sticky. So I'm going to take my ring off. Um, and you just want to use, pick about a quarter cup, and these cookies aren't going to spread at all. So what you're going to want to do is kind of pat them into a cookie shape, like a soap, and then pop them on your pan. That's what we do. <laughs> I bet they would freeze really well. These freeze wonderfully. Yeah, they do keep in the fridge for about a week or maybe even longer. But yeah, I tend to make like big batches of these, double, triple batches. Um, and uh, they freeze really well in the fridge and you can, they thaw in about 30 minutes or you, I just like to munch on them frozen even because they're chewier that way. Uh, so they're really great. So yeah, I'm just gonna rinse my hands so I'm not crazy. <laughs> you seem like a really happy person. What's your secret? Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know, I've always been that way, I think. <laughs> I love my job, I love my life, everything is good. I'm happy vegan, <laughs> just what, eating what? those fruits and veggies. Before you became a, a blogger and a cookbook author, what, what kind of work did you do? Um, I, I was an artist and a designer. So my last job before this was an art director at an art uh, publishing company, but I, I worked in fashion. I worked in, I was a cartoonist for a brief moment. I was a graphic designer. Yeah, I was all over the place. I worked in film, painting uh, sets and like faux scenery. That was kind of fun. <laughs> so this is what your cookies are going to look like uh, before you put them in the oven. And then when they're done, you just bake them for 12 to 16 minutes until they look kind of dry on top and they're a little bit browned on the bottom. And then you let them cool. And then you have delicious breakfast cookies like this. And they're really delicious and chewy. And they have all your favorite ads in. And yeah, check it out. Delish. <laughs> They'll look, they look like a bakery cookie. 
Yeah, they're so good. Um, yeah, and they're nice and sweet from the bananas and the sugar and the, yeah, so the walnuts had a nice little crunch. I always like adding what nuts to mine, but if you're not a fan of nuts, you don't have to. Mm-hmm, still alive. <laughs> so is that, what, is that your normal breakfast every day or do you like to switch it up? Mm, I switch it up all the time for sure. So you like variety? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I have in this book, I have a whole bunch of my favorite recipes. So I have a whole section on toast. I really am a big fan of toast and like way past the, you know, average toast with, uh, uh, what you call it, peanut butter or whatever. I like to think outside the toast box. So I'll show you the picture here. It's very cool. So I have all these ideas of how to make toast fancy, <laughs> which I really like. So I love toast. I love granola. I love um, on, on a breakfast or something, or sorry, on a weekend. I love pancakes and waffles or maybe a more savory breakfast like um, the sandwich, which is really good. So easy to make. And these are freezer friendly as well. Delish. Did yeah, you do, tons of breakfasts. And since you have an artistic background, did you do your own photography for the book? I sure did. Yeah, I did and all the photography, all the design pretty much. Well, the, the designers did all the layout and the cool thing, but this is even my own font. I made my handwriting into a font. <laughs> and that's very cute. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, so... That's how I like to do it. <laughs> so what's the most popular recipe on your book? Ooh, most popular recipe on my book. It does depend on the time of year because it, it, things go very seasonal. I think right now it's my jackfruit tacos that are trending the mo most popular. Um, but yeah, once we get into the colder months, it'll definitely be my pumpkin pie. <laughs> People always go nuts for that. It's been on my blog for years and it's one of the most favorites. And then my cheese recipes, pretty much all of them are really popular. So I have a ton of really easy homemade vegan cheeses, which take like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And some of them are even oil free. So you would enjoy those as well. That is so cool. I love Thank it. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions for Sam? That was really, your book lives up to its name because that was fast and that was easy. Right, and cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so yeah, you can see I have a, I'll do a little flip through to the book here. Um, but there's a ton of recipes, all sorts of um, mains and noodles and all sorts of fun stuff. Salads and soups and snacks and dips and yeah, so I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait for it to be in people's hands. It comes out on March 30th. Um, but the nice thing is if, uh, if you are interested in getting it, I recommend getting it sooner rather than later. You can pre-order it now at your favorite bookstore. And then if you go to my blog, it doesn't taste like chicken.com slash pre-order. So it doesn't taste like chicken.com slash pre-order. You can claim a bonus bundle, which I made, which includes five recipes that are not available on my blog. They're not available in any of my books. The only way you can get them is by pre-ordering my book and claiming your bundle. So there are five bonus recipes, just as a little thank you gift because pre-orders really do help, uh, help, our, help our books get sold and seen by other people and picked up by bookstores. If you give me that link, I can put it either in the chat or the show notes or both. So please consider doing that and people can, can do that. That'd be great, yeah. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> well, email me, like whatever, whatever it is you want people to do. Like in, in the, oh, okay, great. I can yeah, add, that, I can add that. that to the top of the show notes. Uh, Laura says, how many should you eat? I, they look like I might have a hard time stopping. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, so you can definitely have one or two. They're actually surprisingly fill, filling because there's so many oats and good stuff in there. Um, but yeah, so one or two usually does it for me, maybe with a piece of fruit or something. Delish. Well, what's nice is they're also portable. They'd be good for like hiking or traveling. Absolutely. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. And then you can just load up your freezer if you want to make a whole bunch at once. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> Nice. Um, uh, Vegan Queen says, I will definitely buy one of her books. She's adorable. I agree. Here's an interesting question from Heather. I need recipes for the almond pulp that is left over from making the milk. I've made cookies and hummus. Are there other recipes out there? That's why I use the nut for milk machine because it doesn't leave any leftover pulp. So oh, nice. do, you want, do you have an answer for what to do with it? I hear that pets sometimes like it. I do. Um, I've never given it to my dog, but uh, I actually have a recipe on my blog um, called it's, it's, it's almond something crackers. Anyway, if you look up almond crackers, you'll find it. Um, but it's on my blog and it's specifically to use almond pulp uh, for the crackers, which I like because I, I find a lot of recipes for leftover almond pulp are sweet. And um, often I like savory things. So it's a nice cracker. It's nice and savory and they're really, really good. Every time I make them, they disappear in two seconds. And then you're like, oh, I kind of want to make more crackers, but now I have to make more almond milk and I got to keep your ratios <laughs> right. 
Now, somebody's commenting on your ring, uh, a beautiful ring. Tell us about it, Melanie says, and is your dog vegan? Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is the, the ring my, my boyfriend designed for me. It's from a company called Mid Midwinter Co. And it's all ethically sourced. <laughs> Can you see it there? That's beautiful. I didn't know that I didn't know that diamonds could be unethically. I don't know much about jewelry, so. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Blood diamonds are a bad thing. So yeah, it's all ethically sourced jewelry, which is really wonderful. Um, and, you know, responsible, which is great. Um, but yeah, and then he had a custom made for me and it's a celestial diamond in the middle, which I don't know if you can see, but it means it kind of has some of the natural coal in there still, which I really like. It makes it kind of look like a moon. Um, and yeah, the, to the second question, uh, my dog Pixie is vegan. Yes, she is. Ever since I rescued her. Wow, that is very cool. I love it. Uh, here's a question from Cynthia. Sam, do you eat raw food meals? Um, I eat them on occasion, but not with the purpose of being a raw food person. <laughs> that makes sense. I, I do love a good salad and I love, you know, some uh, other raw things. I have a lot of bowls. I mean, it has the cooked rice in them, but a lot of raw veggies on top. But uh, I'm not specifically interested in raw food, uh, but I do like raw fruits and veg for sure. Nice. And then here's a question from Tori. How does she get in her greens? How do I get in my greens? Oh my God, I love greens. It's one of the things that I crave every day, like a dark leafy green. Um, one of my favorite ways is just to use some kale or some broccoli rabe. Um, do you say rabe or rabe? I've I never said rab, say like R-O-B. I think that's right. I'm not sure though. Rob? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I just cook it. I, just, <laughs> I don't say it. Um, but yeah, so I do some of that and I usually just uh, saute up some onions and garlic, or if I'm feeling lazy, I'll just use a little bit of onion and garlic powder, um, a little bit of water and a small splash of soy sauce. And I just put it in uh, my pan and steam it a bit. And it just comes out delicious and gorgeous. And I'll eat a whole head of kale every night almost. <laughs> That's fantastic. Let's see. Yeah. And then I do like kale chips as well, which is true to my shirt. <laughs> yeah. do, do you have a kale chip recipe in your books? Or on your blog? Um, I don't know, because uh, I feel like there's so many good recipes out there. You don't even need a new one. <laughs> uh, but they are delish. Yep, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, how long has Sam been vegan? I think you said since 2012, right? That's right. I went uh, vegan in 2012 in December, the beginning of December. So my first vegan Christmas was like immediately, which is very difficult. <laughs> but it worked eventually. Cool. And uh, there was a question uh, from Aubrey. Do you think that kids would eat your recipes? Oh my goodness. Yes. I don't have any kids personally, but um, I have a huge following of people who have kids and tell me their kids love their recipes. I also, it's really cute. I have a YouTube channel as well, which you can find. It doesn't taste like chicken. And um, quite often, actually, people send me little videos or photos of their kids watching my YouTube channel and making recipes along with me, which is just adorable. But yes, I know that a lot of my recipes are really kid friendly. So I think you'll have a good time there. And there's a lot of things that are really familiar to kids like pizza and mac and cheese and, you know, tomato soup and grilled cheese and all that stuff, noodle dishes. So there's a lot of things that kids would definitely enjoy. You bet. And so Nancy says, did your art background inform your cookbook design? Yes, my art back 100% at the form my cookbook design because yeah, the first one, you can see it's a little bit different. It's kind of similar though. You can see it's all very bright and white and that's just kind of my style. Um, and then again, here's my font that I made it in my own handwriting. And then I did little like notes like this on top of the recipes as well. Um, and then in this one, I use a lot of pastel colors, uh, but this one is just a little bit more white uh, and bright. Um, with less, I don't actually use any color in the writing at all here. Um, so yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I'm very, very opinionated when it comes to the design. Um, and I fought for this cover. This wasn't the cover that they were going to design originally, but I ended up making it, taking a photo of my spoon. I'm like, I think that would look cool. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely very opinionated when it comes to design. So you have an, you actually have a spoon with your name on it like that. No, no, I just put my spoon on top. Um, that or sorry, my name on top of the spoon, but I, I needed a spoon for, for the cover because I thought it would look cool. So I just went downstairs yeah. and well, that looks, I, thought maybe, my spoon. I thought maybe somebody was selling spoons with people's names on it because that would be kind of a cool gift, you know? Oh uh, yeah, no, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeline says, Sam, you're awesome. I have your other cookbook and use it all the time, especially with my non-vegan family. And Angela says, do you ever get caught in the junk food trap? Um, well, thank you. First of all, I'm glad you're enjoying my cookbook and junk food trap. Um, yes and no. 
Uh, I mean, I don't think of it as a trap so much, but I do treat myself to junk food once in a while. Uh, but for the most part, my recipes are, they taste like junk food, but they're for the most part very healthy anyways. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm totally satiated with that. And then, yeah, then I definitely, uh, personally, I do love, you know, buying a bag of vegan chips once in a while, munching on some chocolate and I'm, I'm cool with that, but I, I can't live off of stuff like that. It would make me feel ill. So I definitely prefer 99% of my meals to be homemade. Right. So you have balance in other words. I have a lot of balance. Yeah. Nice. Uh, my mama raised me right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, it was a nice comment. Where did it go? Oh, from Jan. I just love Sam's recipes. They gave me the confidence to try vegan cooking because they all taste great. I love that. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, and that's it too, is that a, a lot of people aren't totally vegan and I'm totally fine with that. Uh, as long as you are trying to eat more plant-based, I think that's great. And um, I do try to make my recipes uh, very friendly to people who aren't vegan. Uh, so that's what the focus of my recipes is more. So that's why I'm not health focused. I'm more flavor focused. And I just try to make things that are delicious that everyone will enjoy, whether they're vegan or not. Yeah, that's great. Uh, here's a nice comment. It's just so interesting to learn who it was that inspired someone into becoming such a major influencer. That's nice. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was my mom. <laughs> right. That is so cool. Let's see. I'm just sorry. Sorry, I have a chat and it goes, it goes faster. I don't know if the guests can actually see what I see. Uh, what I'm, I don't see anything. I, I just hear a lovely thing. Yeah, Louise says, I can't wait to get her book. My exact focus on cooking simply, cheaply, easily, and tastily. What more would you want? I love the fast part, though. That's really, that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and for me, too, honestly, as much as I spend a lot of time recipe writing, when I'm not recipe writing, uh, I, like I start cooking when I'm already starving. So I'm like hungry, hungry, hungry. And I'm like, oh, I need food immediately or I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. so, I need, so a lot of my recipes are fast for that reason, just because I start cooking them when I'm hungry. <laughs> yep. uh, let's see. Um, Martha says, can I substitute maple syrup for the brown sugar? The thing is, is liquid for not liquid, it might be different. Yeah, I, I don't think that would work very well, but I think a coconut sugar should work pretty well. I think they're pretty interchangeable. Yeah, I mean, there is such a thing as maple sugar. It's just very, very, very expensive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's super expensive. That's because maple syrup is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so you never, never had any health or weight problems, I'm guessing. Uh, no, I mean, I was a little bit uh, heavier when uh, before I went vegan, I, I was maybe like about eight pounds heavier. So nothing crazy. But yeah, going vegan definitely helped me kind of maintain my weight. And I'm the same weight I was in high school. I have ever been ever since. So it's nice for that for sure. Yeah. Brenda says was just looking at the reviews for her book and bought it just based on the reviews. Sounds like my kind of cookbook, easy to follow recipes, such a joyful soul. Just love her. Look at that. See, my audience is oh. so nice. I, that's amazing. Thank you so much. And, and that really shows that the Amazon reviews, I know they're silly, but uh, they really do help us out, help us people who write cookbooks out because, uh, you know, that's what sells them more than anything. Wow, I'm, just <laughs> so always thank you. Afraid, I'm always afraid to read mine because, you know, because if you look at the good ones, you have to look at the bad ones. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if, if there are bad ones, you know. It's true. It's true. It can be heartbreaking if, uh, if you have bad critique. That's why with YouTube, I tend to only review the comments on my YouTube videos within the first 24 hours. because I feel like those are the people who are my fans. And then after that, all the trolls start coming out and saying mean things. And I don't like looking at those. Oh my God. Look who speak of the devil. I don't like that saying so much, but Marissa, Marisa is watching from uh, Vegucated and she says, I made your banana bread recently and my kids love it. And she's, she's the person that turned you. That's um, right. That's amazing. Hello. Wonderful to kind of chat with you via this. That's <laughs> so enjoy cool. the banana bread. I, I love that. Uh, Heather says, Sam, I love your cookbook and looking forward to the new one that is soon going to be delivered. I'm making your butter cauliflower for our dinner tonight. Deli that sounds delicious, butter cauliflower, by the way. Yeah. So it's just like butter chicken, but it's made with cauliflower. And that one does have vegan butter in it, but you could definitely skip that. I'm pretty sure I wrote directions in the recipe for how to skip it if you want to cook oil-free as well. And I do, especially more of my recent recipes, I've been trying to include oil-free uh, options in all of my recipes as much as I can, because I know more and more people want to eat that way. So oh, that, we appreciate that so much. You're welcome. Just, <laughs> I just took a cooking class from Sam and she is always so happy and a very good teacher. Love her. 
Oh, well, that's so nice. Yeah, I just did a cooking class, a three month cooking class called The Ultimate Vegan Kitchen, where I live stream from my kitchen every day for, well, not every day, once a week for three months um, and taught people how to cook recipes. And it was really fun. We did uh, kind of more complicated stuff as well, like homemade cheeses and seitan steaks and a lot of really fun stuff. Is that class still available? It's not. That class is over now. Yeah. So not right now. Working on next the new project, releasing the book and other secret projects are coming. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Steven says, does Sam think the cooking show on CTV borrowed her look? I don't know what CTV. Is that Canadian television? That's Canadian television. Um, and I have no idea what you're even referring to, though, because I don't actually have a TV. <laughs> I just have Netflix and stuff. But I'll have to see. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> wow. So people are asking where the recipe is. It's in the show notes, but if you're watching on Facebook, you can't see show notes. So please hop on over on, on YouTube. So uh, she looks vibrant. Vegan nutrition can't be lacking. I made Sam's easy vegan mushroom stroganoff two nights ago. Bethany says your recipes have helped our teen and young adult daughters switch to vegan. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. So many, so many fans here making recipes. I love it. <laughs> I know, that's so cool. And Peggy, I just finished cooking her chili and cornbread. It's what's for dinner. Oh, I'm jealous. I, that chili is one of my favorites. I named it the best vegan chili, and I know that's very boastful, but really, in my opinion, it's the best. It's so good. With the cornbread, you can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Tina Louise says, I love your recipe, Sam. You're awesome. Has Chef Michael Smith ever reached out to you since you were on the Canadian Lentils star of the show? He must be very proud of all your accomplishment. You're going to have to explain what Canadian Lentils are to our audience. Yeah, that's funny. Wow, someone's been here for a long time. Uh, thanks for being a fan for so long. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, the Canadian lentils, um, what, they had a competition, so like, you know, lentils, uh, for, for people to do a cooking show. And uh, I was one of the winners, or five winners chosen. Um, and I got to do film a cooking show with Chef Michael Smith, who you might not know, but he's um, a Canadian Food Network star. So they flew me to Prince Edward County, and I got to go to his actual house and film there and uh, make a lentil recipe with him, which was really fun. Um, and then that was put on YouTube, which was great. And it was all for lentils, obviously. So I taught him how to make my lentil tacos with a cilantro lime uh, avocado sauce, which he raved about, which was great. And he was actually kind enough to endorse my first book. So he wrote a nice note here after that, uh, which was wonderful. I haven't talked to him really since he endorsed my book, uh, but if I ever run into him again, when you were in people world, <laughs> then I would definitely say hi, and I'm sure he would remember me as well. So yeah, he's really, really lovely. That is so cool. So we can see that on YouTube. And what where would yeah, we- Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I had it uh, saved in a playlist on my channel, um, but you could just Google star of the show, Sam Trimble, and it should probably pop up, or Michael Smith, Sam Trimble. Anyway, any of those combos probably would work. Yeah, I'd like to watch that. That sounds great. Paul says, I took Sam's cooking class and loved all her recipes. I've pre-ordered three copies of her book. And Jessica says, the butter cauliflower is in all capitals awesome. It's good using the sauce on chickpeas too. That's amazing. Wow, so much support here. I love it. Thank you so much, everybody. They must, have, they must have heard you were going to be on. Laura says, it doesn't taste like chicken. is always my go-to for meals. And Jan says, Ultimate Vegan Kitchen was amazing. Thank you, Sam, for doing it. And here's a question from Michi. Can she come up with a cookbook that fits the starch solution diet? Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, that is not on, on my horizon right now, but yeah, I guess we'll have to see what people are interested in. Uh, generally, I think right now I'm known for kind of making recipes that are easy and comfort food. So I don't know that people come to me so much for health foods as I'm sure they do to, for you, Chef AJ. They probably come straight to you for the health food. Yeah, they absolutely don't come for me for comfort. Trust me. <laughs> of any kind. <laughs> So it's hard. You got to kind of stay within your niche and make your fans happy. So, um, but maybe, uh, maybe in the future, people, more and more people will want uh, more starch solution kind of focused stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan of starches. That's for sure. <laughs> well, so it's, it's just, just what you're doing now is just giving a couple of options. When you say, look, this is how you omit oil. I think that's really nice when people do that. Yeah. I try my hardest to do that. I'm not the best at, you know, sugar alternatives or flour alternatives, but uh, because it's hard to rest just everything. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, but I do my best to, to help people out as much as I can, because I want to make vegan cooking easy and enjoyable for everyone. Thank you. And you do. Peggy says, been following Sam for some quite some time, and I literally just got done making her brownies about five minutes ago. 
amazing that is not health food but they are delicious oh, no. <laughs> the problem with recipe testing recipes is like that is that i have to make them several times to make sure they work and tweak them a little bit and so then i'm left with like a freezer full of brownies and then it's like a problem for like a month we've yeah. so many brownies on hand but it's a great problem to have <laughs> who is who do you use recipe testers when you have a new recipe or do you just trust your instincts no, I just trust my instincts pretty much. I mean, I've been doing it for almost eight years now, so I'm pretty good at that. Um, and then the nice thing with online is that if it doesn't work out, people give the feedback really quickly. So in the beginning, when I first started posting recipes, if there was anything not wrong uh, or if there's anything a little bit wrong, people would leave com comments about that and I was able to fix it. Uh, but since then, I think I've just really learned how to recipe write and the kind of questions people are going to ask and the kind of problems that could happen based on different kitchens and ingredients. So I've gotten pretty streamlined on it for sure. Nice. Angela says her potato and corn chowder is our absolute favorite soup. And Annette says Canada grows most of the world's lentils. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, that's why we're hosting the lentil competitions over here. <laughs> well, that would make sense. Do you watch Kim's Convenience? That's a Canadian show. It is. I've only seen like an episode or two. Like I said, I don't have TV. I really just watch like Netflix. And right. Crazy that's crazy. A it's a Netflix show. Oh, is it on Netflix as well? Yeah, okay. I, I've only known it to be on Netflix because we don't have Canadian. It's, it's such an adorable show. You got to get through the first few episodes like Schitt's Creek, which is also a Canadian show and one of there my is. favorites. <laughs> that's absolutely. amazing absolutely. i know several yeah. people on that show <laughs> you like know them know them oh well yeah in, in past i did for sure yeah it's a small world canada apparently because <laughs> oh i love i love them i mean they feel like family yep a lot of people love kim's convenience too yeah that's yeah, great yeah do you have a favorite recipe Oh my goodness. Everyone always asks me that and it's so hard because actually my favorite thing is to try new food. I think that's why, partly why I fell in love with recipe writing as well because I love preparing new food and trying all different flavors. One of my favorite things to do is when I go on holidays, especially to tropical places, to try different fruits that I can't get here in Canada, which is really fun. So it's hard for me to choose a favorite, but whenever people ask that, I always point them to my spaghetti bolognese, my tofu bolognese sauce. Um, because it is like the ultimate comfort food. It can be made oil-free as well. Um, and it's just so hearty and satisfying and it's got that meaty chewiness about it, but it's like obviously totally vegan. And for me with that, with like a Caesar salad, delish, like can't go wrong every time. <laughs> That's great. So what are your future plans? Um, so I'm releasing my book on March 30th. So right now I'm doing a lot of, you know, promotion of that, which is really fun and exciting, uh, maintaining the blog. And then, yeah, there are several other projects I'm working on, but I can't talk about them yet. So stay, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, well, when you can talk about them, let me know. Maybe we can promote them for you on this show. So that they, that, That'd that, be amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my <laughs> pleasure. Yeah, you really are adorable. So um, I'm going to check out more of your recipes, especially since you do have some oil-free options. And it's, it's, again, you know, I appreciate that, you, you know, some chefs, that cook with oil are so mean to people that don't eat oil. I don't know if you know this. And it's like, know. and usually those of us that don't, we usually we have a pretty good reason, like a medical reason, usually like we're mm -hmm. not just trying to be difficult. So I appreciate chefs like you that, you know, try your best to give some options for the recipes when you can do it and still do what you do. Cause there's, there's room for everyone. Yeah, totally. Well, yeah, I, w I, w I want everyone, theoretically, I want the whole world to go vegan. And I know that's probably not going to happen soon, but I, it's certainly not going to happen when you push people away who are interested in it. Right, exactly. So I always it, try to. And, yeah, and exactly. Not everybody can do the strictest form of the plant-based diet right away. Usually, like I say, people that do it have good reason because they need to do it, not because they're trying to be difficult. Or I always say, do the least restrictive version of the vegan diet you can do that will give you the results that you want. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. And yeah, I'm happy where I am, but I totally get that some people need to be healthier or, or want to be healthier. And that's great too. Yeah. So Christine says, who is doing the food for your wedding? Oh, uh, his name is, uh, the, what's the chef? Ivan. Uh, I'm just trying to look for his Instagram handle. Uh, Labartola. La, La <laughs> wow. How did you find him? Just on Instagram? Um, he used to do these uh, vegan supper clubs. There were secret supper clubs in Toronto and he invited me to one of them. So I went to that a couple of years ago and it was so special and lovely. Um, and so it was really great. And uh, I went to that. And then, yeah, just for this wedding one, we were thinking, at first I was really bummed what it was going to be uh, a lot of people and then we can't, couldn't do that anymore. So when I thought of, well, okay, let's make do a really special dinner then. Uh, so I thought of him because his dinners are so special. There's such attention to deal, uh, detail. He uses like, 
little flowers and like gold leaf and it's just like beyond special so uh he just opened a restaurant recently uh but he's agreed to cater my wedding which is wonderful and so yeah he's going to be doing a really special custom meal based on his inspiration for the wedding i don't know <laughs> it should be fun so you don't even know what you're having yet um, I, he gave me the menu, but I'm not revealing it yet to anyone, including my friends and family who are coming. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. It's going to be a surprise. Do you have somebody, is he also doing the cake or do you have somebody else doing the cake? No, we're not having cake. Um, we're just having cookies. <laughs> well, you can use those breakfast cookies. You probably have some in your freezer right now. That's true. <laughs> that's Tons great. of them. Everywhere. That's great. Well, they look amazing. Yeah. Smells well, like cinnamon in here. Yeah, cinnamon's great. You can't you can't go wrong with cinnamon. So the, the, thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate all you're doing for veganism and getting people to eat vegan food that tastes like what they're used to. Yeah, so that's exactly what I do. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm really glad you had me on your show. It's been such a blast. It's so lovely to meet you. I've seen you, like, seen your name at events that I've also been talking at, but we've never actually met. So I know, this, is, this, sort is, of. this is the one bright spot of the pandemic is I'm meeting people that I would not have maybe normally met and so this has been great so yeah please get me that link so that people can get those bonuses i'll put it right in what's called the show notes so that when they click there they can buy from you instead of amazon and get those bonus recipes perfect sounds good yeah but they can order from amazon they can order from barnes and noble their, their local bookstore it actually doesn't matter where they order from um so as long as they just send me their order confirmation then i'll be able to send them the ebook so wherever you want to order from it doesn't matter oh nice okay give, give, please yeah. give me that information heather says you can also use the brownies that are in your freezer for your wedding so there you've got dessert cover <laughs> that's right I have desserts everywhere. Maybe that's why I don't want any particularly for the wedding. <laughs> that's right. Well, thanks. And you're, you're just really delightful. It was so nice to meet you. I appreciate you coming on. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast. My pleasure. And don't forget to tell us where you got that shirt because that's a keeper. And thanks all okay. of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you like beautiful blondes like today, come back tomorrow. We have another one, Dr. Kristen <laughs> Funk. Thanks again, Sam. Take care. <laughs>